The Mendelian Cross is named for Gregor Mendel, a 19th century Augustinian monk who performed and documented the first controlled genetic crosses and allowed humanity to begin to understand the nature of inheritance. You're welcome. A Mendelian cross begins with a controlled breeding experiment spanning at least three generations and is designed to determine the inheritance pattern of a trait. Now here's some terminology to help us describe these crosses. We call the outward appearance of a trait its phenotype. The phenotype of this flower is purple. Each version of a gene is called an allele. The examples in this video will have two types of alleles, dominant represented by an uppercase letter, or recessive, represented by a lowercase letter. The combination of alleles an individual carries is called the genotype. Pea plants have two copies of each gene, so the genotype of each trait is represented by two alleles. The next concept to understand is that every Mendelian cross begins with true breeding parents. True breeding means that if two individuals of that variety of organism are mated, then all the progeny will resemble the parents for a particular trait. In this case, white-flowered parents always produce white-flowered progeny. Now, let's start the Mendelian cross. The initial parents in a Mendelian monohybrid cross will be true breeding individuals who differ from one another by a single trait, such as these pea plants, one of which has a purple flower and the other has a white flower. When it comes time to cross the two individuals, they'll be bred in a reciprocal cross. Now this means that pollen from the purple flower plant will be placed on the stigma of the white flowered plant, making the mother in this cross white and the father purple. A second cross is also initiated where pollen is taken from the white flowered plant and placed on the stigma of the purple flowered plant, so the mother has purple flowers and the father white flowers. This type of cross is set up to ensure that the trait is truly inherited from both parents equally. Any progeny produced from the true breeding parents in a Mendelian cross are called the F1 progeny or F1 generation. All the progeny in a cross like this will resemble one of the parents regardless of the parental phenotype. The parental variety seen amongst all the F1 progeny is considered the dominant trait. The parental variety that is absent in the F1 is the recessive trait. So for this cross, purple flower color is dominant and white is recessive. A Mendelian cross will continue for at least one more generation. For the next cross, two of the purple F1 progeny are chosen and crossed with one another. This means that the mother and father are actual siblings produced from the parental cross. Any progeny produced by this cross is called the F2 generation. In this generation, three quarters of the progeny will have the dominant version of the trait and one quarter will have the recessive, demonstrating that the recessive trait didn't disappear but was hidden in the F1 generation. Let's start over and explain these patterns using chromosomes and alleles. Each individual has two alleles, or copies of each gene, and they reside on the homologous pairs of chromosomes that segregate during meiosis. For example, the parental purple flower plant will have two copies of the dominant gene represented here by uppercase letter P, chosen to represent purple. This combination is called homozygous dominant. The white flower plant has two copies of the recessive gene, represented here by a lowercase p, chosen to represent a lack of purple pigment. This is called homozygous recessive. The F1 receives one allele or gene copy on a chromosome from each parent. This combination of one dominant and one recessive in the F1 progeny is called heterozygous. The F1 heterozygotes in this cross will appear dominant because they received one dominant allele from the homozygous dominant parent. In the F1 cross, both parents are heterozygous, so progeny have the possibility to be homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, or heterozygous by two different combinations of alleles. 
the homozygous dominant and heterozygous progeny will express the dominant trait, and the homozygous recessive will appear recessive. These combinations of alleles explain the 3 to 1 ratio typically seen in the F2 generation. All the possible combinations of alleles in the F2 generation can be predicted using a Punnett square, a prediction tool devised by Reginald Punnett in the first decade of the 20th century. What's up? In this method, we can put the two versions of the gene from one parent along the top of the four unit square and two versions of the gene from the other parent down the side of the four unit square. The boxes in the middle are used to predict every combination. We notice after filling it in that three of the four possible combinations would produce a dominant trait because they have at least one dominant allele, and one of the four would produce a recessive trait because it has two recessive copies. Hey, thanks for watching.